Saint Ignatius of Loyola once said, and I quote, For those who believe, no proof is necessary. For those who disbelieve, no amount of proof is sufficient. Unquote. A very happy morning to Father Tom Kunikul SJ, Brother Aitub SJ, Brother John SJ, Rector Father Augustine Perumali SJ, Father Principal Dr. TJ Jose, Vice Principal Mr. Shobha Miranda, Coordinator of Academic Mr. A.K. Das, Coordinator of Faculty Ms. Casey Maya, our esteemed judges, Father Brito, and Mr. Yukesh Kumar, teachers and married fellow Bavarians. It is an honor to welcome each one of you to the inter-class PBT competition for the session 2021-2022, wherein we are all celebrating the 500th anniversary of the conversion of St. Ignatius of Loyola with the Society of Jesus. A day without prayer is a day without blessing. A life without prayer is a life without power. So let us first begin this momentous day with a prayer song seeking God's blessings on each one of us present here. grown cold there your love will unfold as you open my eyes to the work of your hand when I'm blind to my way there your spirit will pray as you open my eyes to the work of your hand as you open my eyes to the of your hand, oceans will pass, nations go at the whisper of your call. Hope will rise, glory shall in my life. Your Ignatius of Loyola, also known as Saint Ignatius de Loyola, was a famous Spanish priest and a theologian who founded the Jesuit order in 1574 and was one of the most influential figures in the Counter Reformation. Ignatius founded the Society of Jesus, also known as the Jesuits, in 1540, along with the approval of Pope Paul III. The Society is presently engaged in evangelization and apostolic ministry in 112 nations. He also believed in love and service to Christ and to men and women of all ranks. From May 2021 to July 2022, the Society of Jesus is celebrating the Ignatian year to celebrate the life of St. Ignatius of Loyola. What is an Ignatian year? Well, the Ignatian year opened on May 28, 2021, which marks the 500th anniversary of his conversion. That memorable day when Ignatius, the soldier, was struck by a cannonball and began his transformation into the Ignatius, the pilgrim. To know more about him and his journey, 
Today, our friends are going to share some important presentation on this theme, the life of St. Ignatius. Through this presentation, we can learn and try to imbibe ethos and principles in their lives too. We are fortunate to have amidst us two very illustrious judges from our own Zaverian family to judge our very talented participants of the competition. Father Brito's mission and vision for the school is to support those students who are academically weak and secondly support and encourage the teachers to become catalysts for students. The first judge for the day is Father Brito SJ, Headmaster Junior School. Father Brito is from Mysore, Karnataka. He has done his higher secondary education from his hometown and graduation from Loyola College in Chennai. He holds his bachelor's degree in education from Christ University in Bangalore. He also has to his credit his master's degree from IGNU. Father is basically an optimist and an idealistic person who thinks that we must be like a river which tirelessly runs towards its ultimate destination, laying behind all the obstacles. As a Jesuit, he has experienced freedom and responsibility which is very unique in every Jesuit's life. We welcome you, Father. Thank you. The second judge for the day is Mr. Yogesh Kumar. Sir is a versatile person who holds a certificate in performing arts theatre from IGNU. He has to his credit a professional enhancement course on performance making from School of Drama and Fine Arts, University of Calicut. As a commerce graduate, he has been practicing the art of theater since the last 12 years. Sir is also the director of Jazba Theater Group since 2016 and has shown his expertise by directing more than 50 English and Hindi plays and around 15 street plays. He has also participated in various workshops conducted by eminent personalities, a forerunner to various national and state events. His passion for theater is well exhibited as a mentor who has trained many talents in more than 50 theatrical and performing art workshops and judged performing and visual arts in more than 50 plus universities and schools. His hobbies include graphics, designing, PPT and filmmaking. He's currently rendering his service as a theater teacher at St. Saviour's Rajnivas, Delhi. We welcome you, sir. Now, let us proceed with the competition. We once again apprise all the participants Thank and you. members present in this room with the rules of the competition. There would be six teams in total, one from each class, and the number of participants in each team would be five. The time limit for the presenter to present the PPT is a total of five minutes. The decision of the judges is final and no queries regarding the final results will be entertained. In case of network or technical issues, the presenter will be allowed to complete the presentation at the end. Participants will be judged on their content, graphics, designing and the overall presentation. On that note, let us begin with the event. All the best to all the participants. The first presenter of the day is class 11B. Kindly start with your presentation. Is the screen visible? Yes. Act as if everything depended on you. Trust as if everything depended on God. Good morning, respected judges, teachers, and my fellow Zavarians. Today, we, the students of class 11B, are here to deliver a presentation on the life of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Inigo de Loyola was born in 1491 in Aspetia in the Basque province of Guipuzcoa in northern Spain. He was the youngest of 13 children. At the age of 16 years, he was sent to serve as a page to Juan Velasquez, the treasurer of the Kingdom of Castile. As a member of the Velasquez household, he was frequently at court and developed a taste for all it presented, especially the ladies. He was much addicted to gambling, very contentious, and not above engaging in swordplay on occasion. For a number of years, he went about in the dress of a fighting man, wearing a coat of mail and breastplate, and carrying a sword and other sorts of arms. 
On May 20, 1521, Ignatius of Loyola rallied the Spanish troops to defend the fortress at Pamplona against the French army. However, things did not go well for the Spanish troops, who were vastly outnumbered. Inigo was struck by a cannonball, which shattered one leg and badly injured the other. He was taken home on a litter to his home in Loyola, Spain. Ignatius had always been a man of action and was able to inspire others to get things done as well. He was involuntarily laid up, during, laid up due to a health. He had uninterrupted quiet and time to reflect on his life. He read the books like Life of Christ and the Lives of the Saints. As he began to read these, he also began to pay attention to the movements of his own heart and started to believe that God was communicating with him in these various movements. Most consequentially, he experienced a joy that he believed was given by God, associated with the idea of doing what the saints had done and making a pilgrimage to Jerusalem to be in the places where Jesus had walked and taught about the reign of God. After years of study, St. Ignatius realized that he must abstain from public religious endeavor until he reached the priesthood. Joined by six other companions in 1539, he started the Society of Jesus, a religious order. He composed the spiritual exercises to help others follow the teachings of Jesus Christ. Members of the Society of Jesus are expected to accept orders to go anywhere in the world where they might be required to live in extreme conditions. He died on 15th July, 1556 in Rome, Italy. From May 2021 until July 2022, the Society of Jesus celebrates an Ignatian year. May 20, 2021 marks the 500th anniversary of St. Ignatius conversion, that fateful day when Ignatius the soldier struck by a cannonball began transformation into Ignatius the pilgrim. God continues to invite each of us into a deepening relationship to ongoing conversion. We believe that by embracing this invitation, we embrace our God who calls us to act in new, bold ways that reconcile our world, bringing about justice, peace, and compassion. For this Ignatian year, we ask for the grace to see all things new in Christ. Now, we would like to present a short video on the teachings of St. Ignatius. Ignatius wasn't planning to focus his order on education. He didn't even initially see that as his calling. But though he may have opened his first school with reluctance, he embraced vocation wholeheartedly. Ignatius was born to a wealthy family. He became a soldier and was badly injured in battles. He didn't develop a strong relationship with Jesus until later, and it didn't always come easily. He struggled between darkness and light, but he found his way to God, and he helped lead others to him, too. It can be easy to get bogged down in the hectic busyness of a day. It can be very difficult, in fact, to see a flat tire or spilled milk as anything other than a hazel. St. Ignatius would encourage us to see God in the person who helps us with a tire, or in the child who was giggling too hard to hold a cup of milk properly. Many people seek of finding God in all things, but in fact, it can feel daunting at times. St. Ignatius encouraged us to think instead of seeking rather than finding God in all things. encouraged his companion to pray the examen. Looking back on the day with gratitude and thinking of what they could do better tomorrow. In our fast-paced world, it can be hard to pause and reflect before launching into the next day. But all of us should follow that approach and wish to turn to examine ourselves more regularly. In the words of Saint Ignatius, whatever you are doing, that which makes you feel the most alive, that is where God is. With this, we come to the end of today's presentation. We hope that all of us will continue learning from his life and become better human beings. Thank you.
that was a very enlightening presentation thank you class 11b now i would like to invite class 11a for the presentation good morning to all present here in the next few minutes or so you all will be going through the life of a great man whose life is an example of the unimaginable plans that god has for each one of us so without further ado let's get started born in aspizia in the back province of gipuzkoa in the northern spain in 1491 inigo de loyola was the youngest of the 13 children in the family As the noted Jesuit historian Father John O'Malley as they observed Ignatius redefined the traditional basis of saintliness which usually involved a degree of unworldliness in contrast he refers to Ignatius as a worldly saint in his youth he was much addicted to gambling very contentious and not above uh, engaging in sword play on occasion for a number of years he went in the dress of a fighting man wearing a coat of mail and breastplate and carrying a sword and other sorts of arms Eventually he found himself at the age of 30 in the May of 1521 as an officer defending the fortress of the town of Pamplona against the French who claimed the territory as their own against Spain. The Spaniards were terribly outnumbered and the commander of the Spanish forces wanted to surrender but Ignatius convinced him to fight for the honor of Spain if not for the victory. During the battle a cannon ball struck Ignatius wounding one leg and breaking the other. because they admired his sheer courage and his spirit to fight the french soldiers carried him back to recuperate at his home the castle of loyola rather than to prison ignatius was physically suffering but his will to learn and face his fate uh, remained strong as steel at the family castle where he was recovering he asked for a few books his favorites to read but he didn't find any familiar titles instead he found christ He found these books unexpectedly riveting. Ignatius had always dreamt of being a hero as a soldier, but now names like Francis of Assisi and Catherine of Siena spent a lot of time in his mind. In March of 1522, Ignatius had completely recovered from his injuries and his past. God had changed him. He wanted to leave his home with a new found zeal of to serve God. He left his sword at the altar of the shrine of Our Lady of Montserrat. He gave his fine clothes away to a poor man and dressed himself in rough clothes and sandals. The soldier within him had died and he had taken up the life of a poor pilgrim. He lived in a cave outside the town of Mandresa. Ignatius began writing about the emotions that took hold of him, feelings of gratitude and anguish, consolation and sadness. It was here where he started the work on what would become the spiritual exercises. Ignatius realized that he needed education to become a priest and convert people. He attended a grammar school for children to learn Latin and other basic subjects. He then traveled to various universities to learn even further. At 38, he got into the University of Paris where he received his higher education. At 44, he earned a master's degree. There he roomed with Peter Faber and Francis Xavier. The three became friends and shared their common desire to serve the Lord. Ignatius soon led them in spiritual exercises. Other men also joined the exercises and became followers of Ignatius. The group began to refer to themselves as friends in the Lord. In 1539, the group went to Rome and presented themselves to the Pope. Pope Paul III approved them as an order and Ignatius became their first leader. He imposed a strict mili- almost military rule on his order. Despite the strict rules, the order grew. Today his order is known as the Society of Jesus. and it works in educating the youth around the world Ignatius passed away on July 31st 1556 at the age of 64 he was beatified by Pope Paul V in 1609 and canonized with his friend Saint Francis Xavier in 1622 by Gregory the 15th today Ignatius is the patron saint of soldiers and spiritual retreats the society today includes priests scholastics novices etc and reach up to a number of more than 16000 members across the world and also includes pope francis the first jesuit to be elected with this we come to the end of our presentation and we hope that our efforts did help you to get to know about something new regarding the life of saint ignatius of loyola thank you that was a commendable presentation thank you class 11a now i would like to invite class 11c for their presentation
for the greater glory of God and salvation in humanity. This was the motto of the sculptor of love, Saint Ignatius of Loyola, a body of divine power. A very pleasant morning to everyone present here. Today, we, the students of class 11C, would like to make you all reminisce his teachings so that we all can carry his motto to another generation. 20th May 2021 marks the 500th anniversary of the beginning of St. Ignatius' enormous change of life. That was the day when Ignatius was struck by a cannonball, beginning his transformation into Ignatius the Pilgrim. Inigo Lopez de Loyola was born in 1491 in Spain. He was the youngest of the 13 children who were brought up by his stepmother Maria. He did not lead a very good life and would often ask people to fight with him. At the age of 16, Ignatius was trained as a knight and fought several battles. During the siege of Pamplona in 1521, he had wounded one of his legs by a cannon. Dreaming of conquering a royal lady's heart, Ignatius submitted to agonizing surgery with the hope of restoring the physical appearance of his deformed leg. Ignatian spirituality is centered around the belief that the divine can be found in all things, action-oriented, focused on self-awareness, inner-directed, adapting, and experiential. The Spiritual Exercises is a series of compilations on meditations, prayers, and other contemplative practices meant to be used like a handbook. Ignatius began writing about the emotions that took hold of him while encountering scripture. It was here where he started to work on what would become the spiritual exercises. He gained a lot of ethereal knowledge, the four pillars of Ignatian spirituality, including spiritual exercise, prayer and contemplation, to examine the discernment. He also said that we acquire an intimate knowledge of the author of the exercises. We discern the saint's natural disposition, which was the foundation of a spiritual character. Education is the weapon. You choose to change the world. Ignatius was an educated man with a keen sense of knowledge. He had studied theology, Latin, and had a master's degree, getting him the title of Master Ignatius. When Ignatius was studying at the University of Paris, he met Peter Faber and Francis Xavier, who were his roommates for six years. Later, he described his title band as Friends in the Lord. Ignatius was a saint and a teacher. He taught the world of things that made everyone a better version of themselves and our world a better community. He told us about the God who loves us and who gave us life we shall have our dedication to words. Ignatius was a man whose teachings are valuable yet after centuries. His words are still the important guidance everyone needs. He also established the Jesuit society, leading the Jesuit education. He taught each individual how to develop their unique role as a member of the human community. Ignatius died on 31st July, 1556 in Rome due to Roman fever, a variant of malaria. An autopsy also stated that he also had kidney and bladder stones, which were the cause of his abdominal pain that he suffered in his later life. While going through the research, we found some inspirations and we tried to get them in words. The visa variants of 11C presented some of our thoughts through reflections. I would like to share a part of them with you all. Finish Kajan, she felt flattered by his way of loving God and his impeccable belief in him. I personally was amazed at how preachful he was towards the world about Catholicism and Christianity. He was mesmerized by the kind of personality Ignatius beheld, practical and iron world. Bhumika got, she looked right through Ignatius' commitment to faith and helping others. Vibhu Garg, he was astonished at how the beliefs of Ignatius channeled through his vision at the foundation of the Jesuit society. 
we present our heartfelt gratitude to each and every person for being such a patient audience, especially in this virtual mood. We would also like to thank the school authorities for giving us this golden opportunity. I would like to conclude with the holy words of Bible by St. Ignatius. Awareness of sin is a result of love and humility, while unawareness is a result of pride and hardness of heart. Thank you. That was indeed a well presented video. Thank you, Class 11C. Now, I would like to invite Class 11B for the presentation. Good morning, illustrious judges, our esteemed teachers, and my prominent Zavidians. Today, we, the students of class 11th D, are going to present a PowerPoint presentation on the topic, Life of St. Ignatius of Loyola. I would like Siddhant to present the PPT and few of my other classmates to apropos on the topic. Inigo de Loyola was born in 1491 in Aspetia in the Basque province of Keposkoa in northern Spain. He was the youngest of 13 children. At the age of 16 years, he was sent to serve as a page to warn Velasquez, the treasure of the kingdom of Castile for a number of years. Eventually, he found himself at the age of 30 in May of 1521 as an officer defending the fortress town of Pamplona against the French. During the battle, a cannonball struck Ignatius, wounding one leg and breaking the other. The leg healed, but he was left with one leg shorter than the other. For the rest of his life, he walked with a limb. Ignatius studied at Barcelona for nearly two years. In 1526, he transferred to Alcala and had acquired many followers. Ignatius then arrived in Paris on February 2nd, 1528, and remained there as a student until 1535. During his long stay in the French capital, Ignatius won the COVID MA at the College of de saint Barbe. He also gathered the companions who were to be co-founders with him of the Society of Jesus. He felt the desire to help people understand their own spiritual nature. Over the next year, he collected his thoughts on paper for what would evolve into the spiritual exercises, his most significant work. The piece took him over 20 years to comprehend. This group became the foundation of Society of Jesus. In 1540, a larger group of followers formed the order in Rome and named Ignatius as the leader. It quickly gained popularity with over 1,000 members from Western Europe and overseas during Ignatius' lifetime. The church recognized Ignatius' work in 1622 by naming him a saint. Everyone has an event in their life in the form of cannonball moment. Sometimes it is huge, physically, emotionally, or sometimes even spiritually debilitating, and other times it is subtle. Maybe a feeling of empathy for someone who is struggling in life or who has been treated uncharitably. Or even like the Old Testament prophet Elijah said, it comes in the form of a light, quiet sound rather than in a violent wind, an earthquake or a fire. Right place at the right time. Because we have the benefit of Einstein and know that without that event, the world would be a very different and less ethical place. That cannonball moment, as it has recently been christened by those who are gifted as such namings, was seen at the time as a tragedy by Inigo. Who could look at such an event and see the bright side? Who could see this as an example of what J.R.R. Tolkien would dub a eucatastrophe? What God and a willing Inigo were able to do with the cannonball moment produces the spiritual exercise, the Society of Jesus, dozens of saints, missionary efforts throughout the world, parishes, retreat houses, high schools, universities, and the Institute of Higher Studies, to name just some of what came about because of the milliseconds where metal forged its way to the flesh and the bone. These cannonball moments, both great and small, can determine a life path of incredible beauty and courage, of faith, hope, and love. But we, like an ego, need to recognize those moments. Otherwise, we will remain merely wounded soldiers in the battle of life rather than victorious warriors who are welcomed home by the true king whose glory we have defended. St. Ignatius of Loyola was first and foremost a man of God. He was a profoundly prayerful man from whom the daily celebration of the Eucharist was the heart and crowning point of his day. 
Thus, he left his followers a precious spiritual legacy that must not be lost or forgotten, in which he venerated the Bride of the Lord and the Mother of Christians. And from his desire to serve the church in the most beneficial way possible was born the special work of obedience to the Pope, which he himself describes as our first and principal foundation. Now, I would like to conclude with a quote, teach us to give and not count the cost. Thank you, everyone. That was a well-presented presentation. Thank you, Class 11D. Now, I would like to invite Class 11E for their presentation. Of Loyola once said, and I quote, if God sends you many sufferings, it is a sign that he has great plans for you and certainly wants you to become a saint. A very good morning to respected judges, teachers and my dear fellow civilians. Today we the students of class 11th e are hereby to represent our PPT in the inter-class PPT contest. So here we begin. Lord, here I stand in wonder of you. I offer my life and my will. My days for your glory, my hands for your use. To serve you, Lord, as you deserve. serve you, Lord, as you Come on. 
Hence, we the students of class 11th would like to conclude our PPT. Hope that it gave you knowledge, motivation and desire to pursue your goals in your life. Thank you. That was a wonderful presentation. Thank you, class 11E. Now, I would like to invite class 11F for the presentation. Greetings of the day, everyone. We, the students of class 11F, are presenting before you all PPT on life of St. Ignatius of Loyola, celebrating the Ignatian year. To begin with, St. Ignatius of Loyola was born in 1491 in Spain as Inigo of Loyola. In 1521, Ignatius of Loyola decided to become a soldier in the Spanish army but in the battle, his leg was crushed by a cannonball. While he was recovering, he felt calling to the priesthood but did not have the educational requirements so he decided to continue his education at the University of Paris. It was here where he introduced his classmates to the spiritual exercises. on a path that they didn't choose, they must realize that everyone should always be ready to take a step forward where life leads us to and take that path as an opportunity to do something better. Teaching. People can change even if that change doesn't come easily. Relevance. If any person wishes to change something in their life or within themselves, they can always do it and should not give up because change comes gradually and not easily. Teachings and their relevance Teaching, see God in all things. Relevance, St. Ignatius teaches us to think of God in all the things. Although that may not always be natural or comfortable, it is always rewarding. It helps one to be connected to God. Teaching, live with gratitude and optimism for future. Relevance, St. Ignatius encourages his companions to look back on the day with gratitude and thinking of what they can do better tomorrow. Legacy Numerous institutions across the world are named for him, including many educational institutions. In 1852, Loyola University, Maryland was the first university in the United States to bear his name. In 1949, he was the subject of a Spanish biographical film, Loyola, The Soldier Saint, starring Ralph Duran in the role of Ignatius. In 2016, he was the subject of a Filipino film, Ignacio de Loyola, in which he was portrayed by Andres Menizo. His feast is celebrated all over the world on 31st July.
the way forward ignatian spirituality seeking god in all things practicing ignatian discernment carefully analyzing context balancing experience and reflection with action ignatius died in 1556 and was canonized a saint in 1622 Ignatius left two great legacies. He founded the Society of Jesus in 1540 together with nine companions and became their first superior general with headquarters in Rome. He also wrote the Spiritual Exercises, a treatise on prayer. That was a delightful presentation. Thank you class 11F. Thanks to all the participants for putting up an incredible show. Now let's sit and enjoy some interviews while the judges continue with the tabulation of the results.
Now we request Father Brito to give his valuable feedback about today's event and our students. Okay, uh, respected teachers, uh, respected uh, judge Yogesh, and my dear students, it is indeed a memorable moment for me to participate and be a judge in this uh, great contest. As we are celebrating the Ignatian year, one of the themes is magis, that is doing always better. One of the classes I mentioned in, in their PPT, that is to do something better. Yes, we always need to do better. We always need to be the first because in this world, especially in this 21st century, there is a lot of competitions unless we do well, unless we excel, we cannot survive. If you want to survive, if you want to do better, then, then we need to do things better. We need to be always the first. I could see that result in today's all the presentation. All of you have done a very good job. There is a good amount of content was there and the graphic and designing also was there. A lot of creativity was there and the overall I'm very happy and satisfied. You know, congratulations to all the team members who have worked hard and brought out a beautiful presentation. So please keep it up. So the uh, last message is do things on time. Unless we do things on time, if we postpone, then things will not work. We need to do things on time and be a committed uh, student as a variant. So I wish all wish you all the best. May God bless you. Have a nice day, children. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father Brito. Before we, we move on to the girls, I would like to thank Father Rector, Father Principal, and Shoba Ma'am for providing a stage for the variants to showcase their starting potential. I would also like to thank Dasar and Maya Ma'am for guiding and supporting us throughout the event. A word of gratitude also goes to our esteemed judges who have taken time out of their busy schedules and have evaluated the presentations of our students. A sincere thanks to Nilo sir and Sobin sir for the interviews. A big round of applause to the technical team and staff as well for working behind the curtains without whom this event would not have been possible. Now, for the most nerve-wrenching part, the results, I would like to invite Headmaster Junior School, Father Beto, to declare the results of for the Ignition Year exclusively inter-class PowerPoint presentation and to suit the anxiety of students. So students, the fruit of the hard work is always sweet. Six team have worked very hard and are very eagerly waiting for the result. Since we can announce only first, second and third, only three teams are qualified. But other teams, you have worked hard and I appreciate your hard work. So the third prize goes to 11F. Congratulations. Then second place goes to 11C. And the first place goes to 11A. Thank you so much, dear students and all the teachers. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Lastly, congratulations to all the winners. All the best to all the participants who could not win. Do not lose hope and keep trying. With this, we have approached the end of the program. Now, why does that? And I, Nirmal, take your leave. We are sure that now you have deeply understood the inspiration of St. Ignatius in our life and would continue to serve the God forever. As to wait. Now let us conclude this program with the school.
to fight for the church and its rights. All for God, so great a glory is a cry. Life, but for God, who's our King, all our hearts to Him we pray. Growing stronger and stronger as fighting lasts longer and purer and purer to make heaven surer with crosses and trials and many denials will stop. But to die true, loyal to our King who reigns on high. He nations lead us all. Uh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Yogesh, sir. Thank you to our MCs, Nirmal and Raza. You have actually put up a wonderful show. Thank you so much. Well done. And congratulations to all the participants, winners, and all the ones who are sitting here to watch this program. Uh, God bless you all. Uh, Nidhal, sir, with your permission, can we end the meeting? Yes, ma'am. We can end the meeting. Nilod, sir, please end the meeting. <laughs>